Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today for you, I have another in-depth gaming benchmark comparison, this time between the Ryzen 5 2600 and the Core i7-7800X. Now, I did recently compare these two processors, or a very similar version. It was the 2600X and the 7800X. Anyway, I compared those in a sort of an IPC type benchmark where both CPUs were locked at four gigahertz using the same uh, memory spec. And I found for the gaming performance that it was actually quite mixed between these two processors, though more often than not, I would say Ryzen did come out on top. Given those somewhat interesting results, I've decided to add the 7800X to the results gathered in the past few weeks comparing the Ryzen 5 2600 and Core i5 8400. I have of course dropped the 8400 to make way for the 7800X, uh, which has been tested in a stock and overclock configuration. Before we get into the nitty gritty of it though, I would like to just thank NordVPN for sponsoring this massive benchmark video. Right now, NordVPN's offering my viewers 77% off a three year membership when you use the link in the video description. I really like NordVPN's no data logging policy and because of this I actually use them to keep my data safe on my phone, laptop and of course my desktop PC. I do highly recommend you check them out if you're at all concerned about internet security. If you're unfamiliar with what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network, and it does exactly what it sounds like. It keeps you and your data private by connecting remotely without having to show your IP or any private information. And more than that, it encrypts the data you're sending and receiving. This is particularly useful when using Wi-Fi at a hotel, for example. You never know who's looking at your information, so stop them by encrypting your data with NordVPN. NordVPN uses military-grade encryption, and they have more than 4,000 super-fast servers in 62 countries across the globe, and that number continues to grow on a weekly basis. NordVPN also offers up to six simultaneous connections and 24-7 customer support via live chat and email. They also offer a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee, so start protecting your internet experience today with 77% off a three-year plan by using code HarborUnboxed at nordvpn.com forward slash Harbour Unboxed, or use the link in the video description. Okay, so here's a few quick notes on the test setup before we jump into the results. The Core i7-7800X has been tested using the stock Intel spec, which only calls for DDR4-2400 memory in a quad-channel configuration. Since there's no box cooler, I've used an open loop system on the Praxis wet bench, and the motherboard of choice is the Gigabyte X29 Aorus Gaming 7 Pro. The same setup has been used to cool the overclock configuration, which sees all cores operating at 4.6 GHz with DDR4-3400 memory, with tweaked sub-timings, and the mesh ratio has been increased to 32 times. The vCore load line calibration has been set to turbo, and the internal CPU vCore has been set to 1.25 volt, with an external override voltage, this is the total voltage going into the CPU, set to 1.9 volt. Then for the Ryzen 5 2600, the ASUS ROG Crosshair 7 Hero was used, but the same performance can be achieved with a budget X470 board, or even a B350 board for that matter. Anyway, two configurations have again been tested, a stock out-of-the-box configuration using the G-Skill Flare X CL14 memory, clocked at 2933, and for this configuration, the CPU is cooled using the Wraith Stealth box cooler. Then we have a 4.2 GHz all-core overclock using aggressively tuned G-Skill Sniper X DDR4-3400 memory with Titan sub-timings, and the cooler has been upgraded to the Corsair H115i Pro. But again, I should note that you can achieve this overclock with a basic air cooler. Then, finally, we have 37 games on the menu, each of which has been tested at 720p, 1080p, and 1440p using the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Last time, I did forget Rainbow Six Siege, so I've re-added that to the long list of games I'm testing with, so let's get into it. Getting the benchmarking session started is Ark Survival Evolved, and here things look very competitive. Overclocking the Ryzen 5 2600 offers no real performance advantage in this title, and for the most part the same is true for the 7800X. A small gain for the Core i7 processor can be seen at 720p, but beyond that we are mostly GPU bound. Okay, so previously when comparing the Ryzen 5 2600 to the Core i5-8400 and Armor 3, I found that stock they both delivered virtually identical performance. That being the case, I found these results quite shocking, but having rechecked the settings and then the benchmark results themselves, I can confirm this isn't the case for the Core i7-7800X. Even overclocked, the 7800X struggles to match the stock Ryzen 5 2600, which admittedly doesn't seem right. I'm not sure why the Skylake X processor is so slow in this title, even at 4.6 gigahertz with DDR4-3200 memory. Now, these results are intriguing and I'll continue to look into them. It would be great to get some feedback from any Skylake X owners out there that happen to play Armor 3. 
Moving on, we have Ashes of the Singularity, and here the Core i7-700X was clearly faster than the Ryzen 5 process when testing at 720p. Under stock conditions, the 7800X was 7% faster on average, and once both CPUs were overclocked, that margin grew to 12%, though the Intel CPU was just 6% faster for the frame time result. As we move to 1080p, things start to become mostly GPU bound, and here Intel was never more than 5% faster, and that margin shrunk to just 4% or less at 1440p. Like the Core i5-8400 tested previously, the 700X easily beats the Ryzen 5 2600 in Assassin's Creed Origins, and this is particularly evident at 720p, as the GPU isn't limiting performance as heavily here. As we move to 1080p, the margins close up dramatically, and then at 1440p, the same experience is had with either CPU. Battlefield 1 throws up some mixed results. Starting at 720p, we see that the 2600 was faster out of the box with 9% more frames on average, though the frame time performance was much closer. However, once overclocked, the 700X is now up to 5% faster and we see similar performance trends at 1080p as well. It's not until the 1440p resolution is reached that the margins really close up and although the overclocked R5 2600 was a few frames faster, these results are within the margin of error. Okay, so I've had a heap of fun with Star Wars Battlefront 2 over the past few days, and that is indeed sarcasm. In the previous Ryzen 5 2600 versus Core i5 8400 comparison, the Ryzen CPU got whipped for the stock configuration, and I couldn't work out why it was so slow at the time. I did take the time to retest multiple times and got the exact same results, but even so, I knew they didn't make sense, especially given that the overclock configuration was up to 40% faster, and I mentioned at the time that the results didn't make sense. When testing the 7800X, I saw great performance at 720p, but then the frame rate dropped right down at 1080p to the same level of performance seen at 1440p, and this made no sense either. At this point, I knew something was wrong with the game, I just didn't know what, so I began to investigate. For this, I switched back over to the AMD Ryzen test system and started to mess around. Over and over again, I was seeing around 110 to 120 FPS at 720p, and it wasn't until I alt-tabbed to the Windows desktop to check out a few things and then load back into the game that I noticed something quite odd. Jumping back into the game, the frame rate was now boosted by at least 30% to around 160 FPS. Now this wasn't a one-off situation either, this was repeatable over and over again when using both AMD and Intel hardware, and after the alt tab I was seeing the kind of performance margins you'd expect to see. However, making the issue a little more confusing to diagnose, especially when I was benchmarking originally, the bug doesn't always seem to be present. Sometimes when you load into the game you do get maximum performance, while other times you see that large drop in performance. And this bug isn't just affecting me either. Tim was able to replicate my findings on his own test systems, and we also called on our Patreon members to help investigate as well, and they found the exact same bug with the low resolution testing. So apologies for the misinformation regarding the Battlefront 2 numbers in the previous video. I will update those results and include them in a pinned comment below. I should have dropped the title from the list of games tested until I'd worked out what the issue was, but part of me didn't want to drop a game just because AMD was seen to be doing poorly in it. But in hindsight, I was wrong to include those results. Again, very sorry about the mistake, but I am glad we were able to work out the issue. By using this workaround to avoid the performance bug, here is how the 7800X and 2600 stack up. This time we see at 720p that the overclocked rising configuration was 21% faster, and we see a 29% boost for the 7800X. Out of the box, the 7800X was able to provide a similar average frame rate with a stronger 1% low result. Then with both CPUs overclocked, the 7800X was up to 8% faster. This margin is heavily reduced at 1080p and 1440p, as performance is now GPU limited, at least when looking at the overclocked results. Moving on, we have CSGO and some more mixed results. And to me at least, the 1440p results don't make any sense. That being the case, I went back and retested twice to try and work out what was going on here. This didn't help me understand the results any better, but I was able to further validate them, so at least that's something. Although the 7800X smashes the 2600 for the average frame rate at 720p and 1080p, it mysteriously drops down to 464 FPS at 1440p, and that's not much faster than the stock configuration. Normally I'd say this is due to GPU limitations, but that's clearly not the case, as the 2600 pushed the GTX 1080 Ti to 529 FPS, and the Core i5-8400 was good for around 500 FPS as well. 
It's also interesting to note that the 2600 was up to 27% faster than the 7800X for the frame time performance, even at 1440p. Very strange results indeed, but I can assure you they are accurate. Deus Ex Mankind Divided provides some very competitive results. Here the 7800X was never more than a few percent faster, and for the most part we saw comparable performance. Overclocking proved somewhat beneficial at 1080p with the GTX 1080 Ti, but even this mighty GPU couldn't justify the overclock at 1440p. Dirt 4 is a Ryzen friendly title and it shows. At 720p the 2600 was up to 13% faster than the 700X once both CPUs were overclocked. That's an impressive result given the Ryzen 5 processor is clocked 9% lower. The 2600 maintained a lead at 1080p and interestingly still offered much better frame time performance once overclocked at 1440p. Moving on to F1 2017, here we see the Ryzen 5 packing a serious punch out of the box as it delivered 12% more frames on average when compared to the 7800X. That said, with both CPUs overclocked, the performance was much the same at all three tested resolutions. Still out of the box, the 2600 was much more punchy in this title. The Far Cry 5 results are also quite mixed and very interesting. Out of the box, the 2600 did dominate at 720p and 1080p, but then at 1440p, while the average frame rate was much higher, we saw a slightly lower frame time result. Granted, it was within the margin of error, but it is strange that it only matched the 7800X here. Then when overclocked, we see that the 7800X really catches up and even surpasses the 2600 for the average frame rate, but it was much slower when comparing the 1% low results at all resolutions tested. Far Cry Primal is an odd title and here we see that it is primarily CPU bound and out of the box the 2600 wipes the floor with the 7800X. But once both CPUs are overclocked the performance is much the same and we see them limiting the GTX 1080 Ti to around 88 to 90 FPS. For Honor is not at all heavy on the CPU and it is a primarily GPU bound title and we see this with the 2600 and 7800X which are able to get the most out of the GTX 1080 Ti. That said the Ryzen 5 processor did at times deliver better frame time performance. Now just quickly please note that these Fortnite numbers aren't comparable with the results from the 8400 versus 2600 benchmark as I've had to use an updated replay due to a recent game patch. This new pass is a little more CPU demanding, it seems I ran into a few more players at once this time around. Anyway the Ryzen 5 2600 still does very well out of the box and it crushes the 7800X at all three resolutions. Even at 1440p it was still up to 18% faster. Overclocked, the 2600 still enjoys commanding leads at 720p and 1080p, though by the time we hit 1440p both CPUs are GPU limited. Still overall an exceptional result for AMD in this title. Using the stock hardware settings, the Ryzen 5 2600 delivered a much better frame time result when testing with Frostpunk, and this was true for all three resolutions. Of course the 2600 is paired with memory clock 22% higher, but the Intel spec only calls for 2400 memory, so take that up with Intel. Anyway, once overclocked, both were able to max out the GTX 1080 Ti, so nothing really in it here. Moving on to Grand Theft Auto 5, and here the Ryzen 5 2600 does very well, both stock and overclocked. Using the stock settings, the 2600 crushed the 7800X, and even once overclocked, the 7800X did take a similar beating. Although the frame time performance was comparable at 1440p, the average frame rate was still 9% higher with the 2600. Moving on to Hitman, we see that the stock settings saw the 7800X and 2600 deliver similar performance, and the 7800X was a few frames faster for the average, while the 2600 was ahead for the frame time result, though both were within or extremely close to the margin of error. Overclocking did favour Intel this time around, and now the 7800X was up to 10% faster in this extremely CPU bound title. Just Cause 3 provides what are probably the most competitive results we've seen so far. Basically the 7800X and 2600 deliver the same performance when stock, and then the same performance once overclocked. Although an unlikely scenario for a CPU limited title, it was bound to happen sooner or later. Kingdom Come Deliverance is up next, and the 7800X struggled to keep pace with the 2600 in this title. Even when overclocked it still lagged behind until we ran into the GPU limited 1440p results. This is a poorly optimised title in my opinion, but even so it did play quite well on the 2600. Mass Effect Andromeda provided very competitive results, and we see a bit of back and forth between the two CPUs. Overall though performance was much the same, so there's really no clear winner here. Next up we have the Overwatch bot match, and here the 2600 offered better frame time performance out of the box, however once both CPUs were overclocked they maxed out the GTX 1080 Ti to deliver the same GPU limited performance. 
Here we can see when testing with Prey that the 2600 has the 7800X's number out of the box at 720p and 1080p. As we often find by the time we hit 1440p though, we do reach a GPU limit. So there's really no chance for either CPU to make a noteworthy difference here. Then once overclocked, both CPUs deliver comparable performance even at the lower resolutions. Intel's Core i7-7800X struggles in Project Cars 2, and here the Ryzen 5 processor was faster both stock and overclocked. Even at 1440p, the 2600 was up to 11% faster when stock, and still 6% faster with both CPUs overclocked. I'd say the lower frequency DDR4 memory really kills the 7800X in PUBG, and we see that once paired with DDR4 3400 memory and overclocked, it was able to edge ahead of the 2600. Overall, competitive performance, and as you might have expected, when overclocked, the performance is limited at 1440p by the GPU. Intel enjoys a performance advantage in Quake Champions when not GPU limited at 720p and 1080p, though at no point did it enjoy double digit gains. With frame rates well over 100 FPS at all times, both CPUs led for very playable performance, but at the lower resolutions, the 7800X was able to push a little harder. Okay, so very sorry, I forgot to include Rainbow Six Siege last time out. The good news is I didn't make the same mistake twice, so let's go over the results. We're mostly GPU limited at 1080p and 1440p, so let's focus on the 720p numbers. Here we were CPU limited for the stock results, but once overclocked, the 2600 was able to push the GTX 1080 Ti a little harder, allowing for up to 5% more performance. Not a big win by any means, but the Ryzen 5 processor was consistently faster. Although Shadow of War is a mostly GPU bound title, we did see stronger frame rate performance from the 2600 at 720p and 1080p. So solid performance from AMD's six core CPU here, but overall we were GPU limited, so both processors delivered similar results. Next up we have Sniper Elite 4 and here the Ryzen 5 2600 was up to 13% faster out of the box and quite shockingly remained 12% faster for the frame time performance at 720p once both CPUs were overclocked. Even at the more GPU limited 1440p resolution, the 2600 maintained noticeably stronger frame time performance and when overclocked was still 10% faster. To my surprise, when testing with StarCraft 2 for the first time in a long time in the previous video comparing the 8400 and 2600, I found the Ryzen 5 2600 to be very impressive in this title. Here we see that it again stacks up very well this time against the 7800X and offers greater performance out of the box and once overclocked. Moving on we have The Division and this title almost always provides us with GPU limited results when testing with mid-range to high-end CPUs. Here we see that overclocking the 2600 offered little to no benefit as the GTX 1080 Ti is pushed to the max by the stock Ryzen processor. The stock 7800X isn't able to maximise the GTX 1080 Ti's performance even at 1440p which is quite shocking. That said the DDR4 2400 memory is likely limiting performance here. Overclocked though the 7800X gets up to speed and is now able to match the 2600. When testing the Core i5-8400 previously, we saw really weak frame time performance when compared to the 2600, and we again see that when testing the 7800X. Although the average frame rate is much the same, the frame time performance is well down, and it's not until we hit the GPU limited 1440p results that the 7800X is able to catch up. I'll just quickly touch on the Titanfall 2 performance as we are 100% GPU limited in this game. And then at 720p and 1080p we run into a 144fps frame cap, which at least to my knowledge still can't be removed. So that being the case, there's not really much to report here, so let's move right along to Vermintide 2. A recently released title that plays exceptionally well with the Ryzen processors, both stock and overclocked. Both stock and overclock, the 2600 dominates the 700X in this title, consistently delivering stronger frame time and average frame rate performance. This is a seriously good result for AMD, and I wonder if we're going to start seeing more and more new titles delivering these kinds of results. Moving on to Total War Warhammer 2, and here it's worth noting that the overclock 700X is only able to deliver performance that's similar to the stock Core i5-8400. As a result, the 2600 was faster both out of the box and overclocked. It's not until we hit the GPU limited 1440p resolution that the 7800X is able to match the 2600. Watch Dogs 2 is a very CPU intensive title, but given that it predates the release of Ryzen, it is better optimised for Intel hardware, and we see the result of that here. Even out of the box, the 7800X was superior, and it extends its lead at 720p and 1080p once overclocked. Even at 1440p, the 700X beats out the 2600, so not a great showing from AMD here. The second last game tested is Ghost Recon Wildlands, and here we see a mostly GPU limited scenario, particularly at 1080p and 1440p. 
Dropping down to 720p does allow for some separation. And once I overclock, the 700X is the more powerful CPU in this title. Though of course, under most normal conditions, this difference won't be realized. Finally, we have World of Tanks, and here we find some very competitive performance, both stock and overclocked. These are CPU limited results, and despite that, both the 2600 and 700X are very evenly matched. Okay, so if you made it this far, well done. We've now looked at how the Core i7-700X and Ryzen 5 2600 compare in 37 games, both stock and overclocked at three resolutions. To make summarizing these results a bit easier, here's the average performance across all the games tested. As you might have expected, the overall picture looks quite even. At 720p, the Ryzen 5 2600 was up to 9% faster out of the box, but the default Intel and AMD memory specs see the 2600 pair with DDR4 memory clock 22% higher, so a big advantage to AMD there. Once both CPUs are overclocked to a realistic maximum frequency with fine-tuned memory sub-timings and the mesh overclock for the 700X, we find very similar performance. The frame time result was a few percent better with the 2600, but the average frame rate was a few percent higher with the 700X, so again, pretty similar performance. Those margins are also seen at 1080p, though at 1440p the Ryzen 5 2600 did a little better overall with stronger frame time performance. Still though, there wasn't a great deal in it. So there you have it, in terms of gaming performance, the Ryzen 5 2600 and Core i7-7800X are very similar once both CPUs are fine-tuned for maximum performance. I imagine if we bumped up the stock configuration for the 7800X up to DDR4 2933, we would see identical performance out of the box as well, but by doing that we are technically overclocking the memory. In any case, both CPUs are able to deliver exceptional gaming performance. So you might be wondering why I have admitted to not liking the Core i7-7800X in the past, most recently in my top five worst CPUs video. To be clear, the 7800X isn't a bad CPU. As you've just seen, performance when overclocked is excellent. The issue, is the price. The 700X comes in at an MSRP of $390 US, making it more expensive than the much faster Core i7-8700K and significantly more expensive than the $190 US Ryzen 5 2600. Essentially what this means is that the 2600 is offering the same level of gaming performance for half the price. It gets even worse when you factor in the platform cost. The cheapest X299 boards are priced $200 US, while the X470 boards start at $140 US, though it is possible to achieve a similar level of performance on an ultra-affordable $80 US B350 board. You also need to purchase twice as many DDR4 memory modules if you want to take advantage of the 7800X's quad-channel memory support. The 7800X also requires some seriously beefy cooling at 4.6 GHz, whereas the 2600 is good with a basic air cooler for our 4.2 GHz overclock. So, at the very least, you're looking at having to spend 80% more on the 7800X and X299 combo, opposed to the 2600 and X470 combo. Hell, you could buy two Ryzen 5 2600 processors and two B350 motherboards for the price of a single 7800X processor and board. This right here is why I don't like the Skylark X series. It has nothing to do with the CPUs being bad because they're anything but. Again, what's bad here is Intel's insane prices. I'd say the days of massive profit margins for Intel are coming to an end. For example, we're surely going to see fewer and fewer end users coughing up an 80% premium for the Core i9-7960X over the incoming Threadripper 2950X when they deliver the same level of performance. Anyway, I'm not hating on Intel here. I'm merely noting that we have some serious competition in the CPU space now, and Intel really does need to react to that by lowering the prices of their high-end desktop parts. Of course, they won't feel the need to reduce prices until they see a decline in sales, but that's surely gonna happen as AMD continues to become more and more competitive with each release. Finally, don't forget to check out NordVPN using the link in the video description. They're offering a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee, so start protecting your internet experience today with 77% off a three-year plan using code HarborUnboxed at nordvpn.com forward slash HarborUnboxed. It really is a fantastic service that I do use myself, so I'm sure you won't be disappointed, and I honestly do highly recommend NordVPN. And that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.